my uh, ego photo. Uh, so my name is Sulamita. You can find me on Twitter, Sula Garcia. I'm Brazilian. I don't speak German. <laughs> uh, I used uh, I grew up in a, call, a city called Florianópolis, which is actually an island on the south of Brazil. And this was the the kind of environment that I grew up with. Uh, later. I moved to Sao Paulo, which is a huge city, one of the third, uh, it's the third biggest city in the world, and I love big cities, uh, where I started working for Intel as community manager for, for Latin America, and then I moved to London, I also love uh, uh, big cities, and uh, <coughs> then I moved to Hart, and uh, you can see the scenario from where I started to where I am actually, it's, it's quite different. Uh, on, on my free time, I like to sing, uh, although I'm still taking classes, to try crazy new, uh, new adventures. That was my, my birthday gift for myself two years ago. And also try to do some uh, weird scapes. So today, my lovely partner uh, went to a travel very early and locked me inside the apartment on the first floor and took my keys, and I had to find a way out. And it wasn't a uh, something like that, but it was similar. <laughs> I have to. So, because I had to come here to talk to you guys today, I don't know, well, we're gonna have a conversation later. <laughs> so what I'm here today is to talk about perceptual computing. So why are we, Intel, investing in perceptual computing? We just released the gold release of the SDK last, uh, last week. It's free. Uh, the camera that we <laughs> work with, it's not, uh, it's not free, but the SDK, which is the technology, is free. So the camera is made of, uh, from Creative. By the SDK, uh, you can download and use it, and it's including face recognition, gesture recognition, uh, attribution, voice recognition, 3D track. So the main difference between the, the technologies that you guys might be thinking or might be have used already with Kinetic is that Kinetic is long range. You have to have some space. And it, it can detect limbs. So it detects your arm or your hand. But it doesn't detect your fingers. This is to be used on the desktop. It's close range from 15 to 1 meter and can detect up to 10 fingers in front of that and can track the, the motions of the fingers. Uh, besides face recognition, also has some algorithm trying to get... Uh, at this point, it's, it's not fully uh, uh, exact, but it's already try, uh, get, having a good result in guessing gender, age, and some facial expressions like smile or closed eyes. Um, on the, the, the tracking recognition, the gesture, we have a lot of gesture later I'm going to show uh, on this. And this is everything, like you mentioned before, to have a more natural relationship with the, 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 with the computer. So instead of having a token, uh, I'm also studying psychology, so there is this idea of a token. When you have something in, to, in between you and objective, you become a bit detached from it. So when you have to interact with the keyboard or the mouse to have something happening in a screen, you are detached from that. When you have a gesture or a touch and it's automatically responding to your gesture, you become more attached to this. And people really respond really well to these uh, direct interactions. Uh, so. The algorithms can be uh, can be uh, extended. You can use that. You can create your own <coughs> gestures. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, you have voice recognition. And the idea is to be really be immersed on the experience. Is to forget about that. Uh, uh, forget about what, how exactly are you doing, but to just be immersed on the experience and using your whole body as as a control. The, the camera, uh, it's, it's uh, a 3D camera, it has an infrared to detect that. So for some examples, you can use a regular camera for face detection, just to detect a face, to identify. But for face recognition, for mapping, 
For gestures, you need depth, so you need the infrared. And then that's, that's uh, why you need. The camera is this size, it's via USB, and it costs uh, $150. $150. And you can order on Intel.com Software Perceptual and the same the same place that you can download the SDK. So going a little bit deeper on what you're gonna find when you have the SD, when you download and install the SDK. So on uh, you already have several samples that are on the interval you, and we can go through all of them. Uh, where you can see some of uh, most of the features by the SDK. And on the sample director, you actually have the source code from all the samples, so you can see how to implement gesture, how to implement uh, face recognition, uh, how to implement your own gestures. There is a lot of documentation as well, how, to, uh, how the face attribution works, so it's all open. You have uh, several other, uh, directories with the documentation, with the libraries, uh, with uh, some, some information. And so you can get started. The architecture, um, well, there is the applications, and there is the SDK, the framework in the middle, the interface, and then the lower level. Uh, I think this one explains better. So on the very low level of the SDK, you have the, the, you have the, the interactions that you have with the SDK. So you have a module for images, for audio, for gesture, for face analysis, but this is, it's a lot more uh, uh, work to, to deal with. So we recommend to use the YouTube upline or in the YouTube uh, capture that implements most of the, the things that you need. Yeah, that's, that's why I also am doing singing because I, I speak so much and I forget to breathe. <laughs> um, uh, everything is uh, done native in C++, C++, but you have the C# -sharp port, the processing, open frameworks, and the Unity. So we also have uh, on the you know, on the website on you know, software.intel.com we have some some training on how to use uh, one example of this with Unity. Uh, and if you are interested, I can show you uh, later where to find it. Okay, and please, if you have any questions, just shout it out. Uh, so, how the gesture recognition works. So, we have a, a, a few structures. So, for instance, the blocks <coughs> are uh, images that helps you to, to separate the background from the hands. You have the geo node that are points. So uh, later I'm going to connect on the on the on the the camera and show. But for instance, when you have a hand detected by the camera, you have several points in the hand. So you have a point here on the on the wrist. You have a point in the middle that is doesn't really mean the the, uh, the middle of your hand. Actually, means the grabbing point. So when you uh, when you're closing your hand, where is the the point that is, is being uh, uh, grabbed. You have one point for the beginning and one point for the ending of each finger. And this is all, all trackable. You also have identification of if the, the hand is completely open, if it's closed, uh, and, and so on. We also have a few gestures predefined. So thumbs up, thumbs down, peace. Just uh, hands open, waving a circle, uh, swipe left or swipe right. And also, uh, there is some alerts predefined about uh, gestures. So, as I mentioned, there is trackings in each point, and on the structures, you can also have identification for each finger the thumb, the index, the middle, the, the ring, and the pinky. Although, um, when you have uh, less than five uh, five fingers, it, it doesn't uh, still is not very precise. So, uh, most recommended is to use just hand fingertip uh, if you don't need exactly uh, one of those fingers. Uh, and also, when you have a close hand, you have to, you have the the points. So this is using the the three dimensions. So the 
uh, using depth as well to track mode. And so this is the, the most uh, things that you need to know about gesture. Yeah. So a simple hello world, like you mentioned. If you use the pipeline, then you have uh, you have a lot, all the initializations, all the calling, and everything done for uh, for you. So you just have to use a, a instantiate. Oh, by the way, how many of you are C plus plus developers? Yeah. Yeah, I should have asked it. Well, so far it's, uh, well, we had the, the C sh and C sharp. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we need a questionnaire next time so I can prepare the writing. Um, well, but it's not that. Oh, wait, right. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's pretend that this is some algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> So the thing is, you have the class uh, pipeline that is going to uh, take care of a lot of uh, underlying things for you. And you have, when you have the gestures, you have the labels. Uh, you did, uh, there is some gesture happen. When you use the pipeline, you're going to receive uh, notice that is gestures coming here on the, on the data uh, structure. So then you have to analyze the label, and then you find what kind of gesture was that. So you have the swipe left, swipe right, up, down, swipe up or down, or uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, and then you do something. Uh, this is uh, then uh, something that you can do is to refresh the screen, and uh, yeah. So this is some some structures that are necessary. Um, and now I'm going to go into the Visual Studio. So here is the... the simple code. The, oh, this is included on the... on the... yeah, it's on C Sharp. This is included on the SDK when you download it. Like I mentioned, once you, you downloaded it, I think I placed a shortcut in here. No. Okay. So when you install the SDK, you have here in C uh, program Intel PC SDK. So in here you have everything that you install on your uh, on on the installation. Uh, on the binary, you have. The, the samples and on the samples you have the source code so you have all the source code here that you can check later uh, now I'm going to also connect the camera here so we can see what it's all about and let's see if <coughs> So, okay. <coughs> the gesture viewer. So what it's doing here, it's <coughs> here it defines uh, what is blanket and what is getting close. So the farther I go, the less it recognizes. You can recognize up to 10 fingers and track the position. So you, if you see on the side, uh, you can see a, a blue and they, uh, when I have the two hands in here, the blue bar that means if it's closed or open, and the green bar. So you also have the predefined gestures, and you can see that what is it doing here is recognizing something and just showing me on the top what I'm I'm doing. 
So how how is this doing? What is it's doing? Okay. Um, so this was kind of the hello world that we saw, uh, and if we, if we go here on the render, because this is just to recognize uh, this the simple is just in instantiating uh, what is supposed to instantiate the pipeline uh, frame. <coughs> And then on the gesture, uh, we can just, we could, if you want, just uh, introduce here and detect what kind of gesture it is and do something and uh, select files or, uh, you know, pass slides or do whatever we want. Uh, if we go here in the render, um, here it was associated every, every gesture with an identification. And then uh, on the... And their pictures, and then doing a lot of a lot of things. And where was it? <coughs> and in here, when uh, rendering all this, is then. Showing associated pictures with uh, with the on the top of the, the screen, so uh, it's n it's not that straightforward, but it's also not that complicated because you already have the gestures. You might have to uh, to work with some other uh, structures on the on the on the, the SDK, but the main point, which is Tracking the gestures because to track a gesture you have to know what is uh, where everything was and see whatever uh, all the uh, track all the the, the movements and then define that if there was a gesture or uh, and and to what direction and what kind of gesture so this is already done um, some other tricky examples. Might be uh, the the face uh, the attribute detection. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's still being checked. Let's see what it has. To, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> What's the number? Huh? The number? Oh, the number. Uh, <laughs> the number on this case is just an identification number, but you can save this number and save a face and, and have some some trade. <laughs> Yeah, I I Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Does not like my hair or what? Uh, yeah, so uh, there is some voice recognition. Uh, it's still a bit tricky. It doesn't like accents, so I'm not going to go there. <laughs> But uh, this is, is something that we started to to work. You know, it's it's uh, uh, you on the website. You can find the developers and uh, they can talk directly with the engineers that develop this to do any uh, to ask any information or ask any questions and start to using and give the feedback. Um, yeah, I think that was what I was going to present, and then I'll pass to head to the forty two. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Um, is there any kind of SDK implementation you can use in a browser? I mean, like, besides Unity. So maybe plugins for Chrome so you can. No, I didn't want it. To do it by yourself. Yeah. And who's more? So, there is um, just FYI, so one of the participants of the Ultimate Coder Challenge is working on the Unity um, 
Hi, uh, pleasure to be here. Actually, it shouldn't be me. I am not the technical guy in our company, um, but I'll try to go as far into details if you have any questions. A little bit about the background um, about our company. Uh, I don't have an ego slide. The reason for that is I'm founder of the company, so you part of become your own company. We actually started the company in 2006, 2007, targeting at, well, back then we said, computing is great, everybody of us does everything there, but it's hard to, to access it for most of the people. So we decided there should be like a, a touchscreen device, like a tablet, and you should have a widget interface, which basically just says shopping, and you just click there and go there. And that was before iPhone and iPad and everything, and the device that came out of that was WeTap. Um, some of you might remember it. Uh, we did it together with a Berlin company in Berlin. We actually did the product, they did the marketing on that. Didn't go that well, um, <laughs> to make it short. So in 2011, actually, we decided, well, the tablet market is going too much into a, a technological and patent war between the large companies, and there's no space for a young technology company that basically is focused on interaction design. So we asked ourselves what to do, and the next um, area where we arrived at was actually that now the tablets are there, we believe that the interaction with the computer should become a lot more natural. So since I'm not the technical guy on the team, but uh, so I cannot go into the coding details, what I would like to do is give you a little bit of our vision of where things will evolve to. And um, on the one hand, it says eye tracking about us, but actually what we do is um, we have, um, our, we call our technology NUYA, natural user interaction, and we actually combine all kinds of sensors. So we use a perceptual SDK as an abstraction layer to access all the sensors that are luckily abstracted for us that way so we don't have to connect to different cameras like the Creative Canva camera or whatever in, in the Lenovo device. Um, we just use that for gesture, for speech input. Um, and on the other hand, we do a lot of things with eye tracking. And the basic reason for that is um, that we believe uh, that eye tracking um, has one substantial advantage compared to things like gesture. And that actually doesn't fit what I'm telling you right now, so don't look there yet. <laughs> um, the, the big advantage of, of, of gaze is actually that you know which object you want to interact with. And, and one simple example is, imagine a scene when you're uh, having breakfast in the morning and you want to have a button on the other side of the table but two people are talking and you don't want to interrupt them. But the moment you start looking at it, Everybody of you would, or everybody would recognize what you're looking at, and some people might even hand it over directly because they understand what you want. And we believe, already in technology today, um, computers are actually capable of doing exactly that, behaving a lot closer to <coughs> to how humans interact. And so, from our perspective, it's it's kind of uh, and, and actually it feels a little bit of like artificial intelligence if you do it right. And that's where we want to arrive to at. The reason why we combine it with gesture is quite simple. Because here, um, if I do a, a sliding gesture, the computer obviously understands I want to do a slide. Now, if, for example, I have an image full of, uh, or I have a, um, a photo organizing application, if I do a gesture, the computer would not understand what image I want to interact with. So if I combine that with, with my gaze and the information which image I'm actually looking at, I could just Flip, into, flip it into my selection, I could throw it away, I could rotate it, and I can suddenly interact with a lot more information, or with a lot more content. Um, that is obviously possible with gesture as well, if I call up a mouse pointer and then move to something, and then interact with it, but this type of in indirection, as we call it, is not really, help really helping the user experience. It's like when you stand in front of your connect and you're trying to make it work, and you're bending around to move a cursor, it's just not fun. And we think it should be fun. Computers can be a lot more fun. And maybe one of the reasons why we started to work on this is because I never learned 10 finger typing and I don't like to use my mouse. And it's just, it's just something we, that was invented 20 years ago, even more, and that was good back then, but right now we think it's a, it's a point to step on. 
One other asp interesting aspect um, about what we are doing is, as I said, we're connecting to all these sensors. What we decided is um, that to make that work, we need one common platform in between to interact or to communicate with all these types of sensors because for most of us, um, the, the code we're just seeing connecting to all the sensors um, one by one is, is, is a hassle we don't need. And in many situations, we actually just want to have a, a scroll box that automatically scrolls when I look at the bottom of it or that also would take the input if I just swipe with my hand. And I would prefer to just, or many of us would just prefer to, to take that scroll box and work from there rather than to bring all the sensors in and make sure that the interaction is the same. And apart from the, from the developer perspective, it's also the user experience, uh, perspective where we all want to have one common interaction model working with, with all these sensors. So the Numia core is, is one of the ideas we have around that. Um, if Stefan would be here, we could go a little bit more in detail how, how everything is set up. Um, I won't do that. If you have any questions, uh, it's better to contact them. But the interesting th uh, is Stefan. But the interesting thing is what we actually did is we have one part that is completely behaving like an SDK. So you have um, C bind, uh, C uh, bindings. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, C sharp, C plus um, plus to work with that. <coughs> with C, you can also use it in MATLAB and in Java and so on. So we've got all these possibilities to use it like a standard SDK. But one of the bigger problems we were facing is how to create enough content the moment people start having devices with all these sensors. So we created a, a simple rule-based language which allows us to define areas in, for example, a Photoshop application and say, okay, this is the area where you work with, with the content and this is the area where you have the layers. And so a common situation, you're pointing with your mouse, you're at the, you want to do something and suddenly you realize, well, I'm in the wrong layer. Photoshop. So now when you go back with your mouse and, and uh, change the layer and go back to the point, you have to go to that exact point where you wanted to do something. Um, what we don't know is if I'm at that point and I just look at the layer, I automatically get a second mouse pointer where I could just change that layer. And then the mouse pointer automatically jumps back to the point where I was before. So our idea with that is really to make it really easy and really fast to enable applications that are already existing today. So to do something like enabling Counter-Strike, where we one of the <laughs> we, get, we have all that running and we have a demo over there to test it later on. So you can try some eye tracking, uh, try some 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 image applications, some image applications. So the interesting the interesting approach to that is really when you have something like Counter-Strike and you want to have the computer behave like the center area is full control of the mouse because you want to be very precise and very fast. But if somebody runs in from the side and you just look at it and give it a shot, it automatically would fire the first shot there and get that person centered. And to create something like that, it would take you half a day, maybe a day, to create an extension onto an existing application. You have no access to the, to the source code whatsoever. Um, so that's that's one of the solutions. How we um, how we how we want to make it uh, really easy for people to enable a lot of applications, and that is might not be directly focused at you because most of you probably are a lot um, deeper down in the development. But if somebody's really good at I don't know using Photoshop or any application, there's an easy way now to um, use his knowledge and combine it with with the sensors by simply make, enabling him to, to create that kind of interaction. So, um, I don't know how much time I have left before the pizza is going. <laughs> One of, five minutes. Five minutes? Perfect. So, um, now stepping a little bit away <coughs> from, the, from the whole programming side, from, from our perspective, the, the real interesting thing in combining all these sensors um, and, and I just want to give you some ideas on, on what you can do with a perceptual SDK or with a Numia SDK. Um, the interesting thing is <coughs> when you start combining sensors, suddenly you, suddenly you can create user experiences that go beyond mouse pointers and clicks. Today, most of our programming is, is, is focused at single actions. Mouse pointer point is moved to some point, I get a click there, that's it. But now, if for example, I'm standing here and I'm waving with my hand because I'm gesturing or I'm talking to you and whatever, the computer actually should not do that. Typical situation when I do a demonstration of, of, of devices, 
and I'm sitting there and, and the computer's in front of me, people are standing behind, of me, behind me, I start doing things with my hands. Now, suddenly, when I combine it with eye tracking, the computer, or for example, if I use the face recognition of perceptual SDK, however you want to do it, you should actually teach the computer that if I'm not looking at you, I don't want this to create something. Maybe only if I'm in a presentation situation, but that, that is things that create a lot more complex situation, actually, to, 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 to design user interaction. And the point where these kind of devices will be really getting to the market is still a little bit away. Some of the reasons for that are that there's still some challenges in the tracking. <laughs> but um, what we believe is that um, this is the right point to start for the developers to work with the technology because there is a lot of indications that this technology will become available in the, in the, in the, in the near future. And whoever understands that technology will be able to create something, we always call it like the angry birds for perceptual computing, for, for national user interaction. Because touchscreens created a completely new way of interacting with your, with your computers. That allowed so many small companies to come up with solutions that were not there before and that were not done by the big ones like Microsoft or Adobe or whoever is usually doing the applications. But now with this change coming up and with us preparing for that change that will maybe happen in 12, 16, 18 months from now, maybe two, two, three years, we don't know, but that's actually a short time if you, if you think about three years ago, then you come to a point where right now we should start working with it. And that's why I really like that Intel is pushing that topic that much. And uh, maybe just to give you one final idea of, of what's possible with, and here I'm focusing on eye tracking since it's one of our main main areas we are focusing in. One of the interesting things that happens when you use eye tracking, for example, you go to the computer and you, um, you enter Intel. And now it comes up with a list of results like websites, images, um, some documents you have about, about, about Intel. The moment you start looking at these documents, your, your peripheral view starts selecting the things that you might be interesting in, uh, in, interested in. And your focus just jumps from one to the next one. That information now, within around about three to four, well, three to five seconds, can be used by the computer to offer you to redefine or to, to focus on different results. Like, for example, in this example, I'm, I'm obviously looking for a picture or for an image with a yellow highlight, so my, my gaze is just jumping to these. In that situation, the computer could automatically offer me to refocus on yellow images with yellow highlights. And this could also appear at a point on the display where I'm not looking at because the computer knows I'm right now looking at the bottom area of the screen. And based on, on, on this question and only looking at the OK, the computer could then um, resort and, and bring up all the yellow images first because I might be looking for a sunrise or something. And right now with weather in Germany, sunrise is something most of us are looking for. <laughs> so this is actually... Um, what we believe will happen in the near future, computers will be able to respond to us, and um, I hope many people start working on it because it's a lot of work to be done to get that right. Thank you. I'm just for Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Oh, yeah, sure. Because I'm curious, actually, like, so you're tracking pupil, or you're tracking, you know, what exactly? Because, for example, my eyes are really dark, so I don't, you know, like, couldn't really see my pupil unless I had, like, a light right here. Or, like, how, what's, and is it already working, like, that accurately, that you can do layers and this kind of thing? Like, because you know how a company will usually, they'll show you um, an example that totally works because it's, like, obvious, but, like, on other, like, does it work kind of, like, overall, or just specifically for the tasks that you Chosen. <coughs> On the technology side, we work together with, uh, with companies like Toby and SMI that have been working on eye tracking for a long, long time. How it works is actually it's, it's infrared lighting and reflections are seen on your eyes. So okay. it can, can track dark pupils as well. It works around about, I don't know, it depends on the technology, like 90% of the people right now, 18, 80 to 95, something like that. So it's quite robust. Um, anybody is welcome to try it. We have a few bombers. That is, bifocals are not supported. So the moment you have two focus areas in your glasses, when you 
change the head position suddenly the, how the eyes are used changes too much to uh, produce good tracking, but it should work for you. <laughs> um, so how accurate is this? Because you mentioned a sample of um, the eyes of applying a gun, so that, that, uh, in, in typical uh, uh, 3D games you have like different layers, but I'd say if you gaze like uh, at me in the distance, like how accurate is the like, point to like, that one or the one foreground or mid, mid, uh, mid ground? And... Well, you, you, and right now, you, or probably never, you can never use it for a headshot. Except if you use it, <laughs> well, the, the reason is quite simple. The um, gaze is actually, or your gaze is actually something that is um, very dynamic, first of all. Um, and, and there is some reason why we, why in general eye tracking seems to be limited to run about 0 0.5 degree precision from the eye. So on your laptop you're talking about 10 to 15 percent. So in many situations, and that's again what I said, you have to think intelligently how to solve things. Many things, for example, suddenly rather than working with a point precision, using a cursor, how you got there, is, is a lot more relevant. If, for example, we don't have a close button, mm -hmm. but if I would have a close button up there, um, making sure that I exactly get the, the click or the, the input when I look at that is really difficult. But whenever somebody has a fast path to the, to the right, up, right upper corner or left upper corner on the Apple, if there's a fast path there, and then um, there's an input that there should be happen a happening a click. Most probably it's closed button up there. Okay. So that's tricks we use to make it simpler. And that's also parts why we think in the New Year SDK we try to abstract many of these okay. things. Do you, uh, do you also like, do like, for example, like eye tracking and then like uh, the comment? Like how do you execute the comment? Just like by just so or like if I blink and then okay, it's, sh uh, it's shot something. We did that. <laughs> but um, we did that. We did nodding too. Um, we were working with the technology for quite some time. It, uh, it seems obvious in the beginning. It seems very tiring after a few minutes. Um, but how we do it, it depends, actually. For example, this, if what you see down here, like the little minus thing, this is an expanded view of this. If you... No, I can't find it right now. Right here, you see. Actually, on the top area, there's a working area, and there's a selection of, of all the pictures you want to look at. And that is below that. Um, so where the minus right now is would actually in the normal state be a plus and you have all the, the things are, uh, arranged and one of the things we do is <laughs> <That's it. laughs> <I know that. laughs> So um, what we do is the moment um, these kind of actions are triggered and I just look at that we are more or less sure that you want to click that button and we maximize it and if you just look at this area it would minimize again and if you make that really quick it doesn't matter if, for example, you launch an application in the Windows Start, start screen, um, then we require like any key press. So if you look at it, give it a key press, if there's not some kind of other command, um, it will launch the application. So it depends on how much negative impact a false, fall, or false positive um, does. I don't want to keep everyone from pizza, and it's not even a, a developer question. I was just wondering how you're making money. <laughs> that, that is actually, that is actually one of the most difficult points right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it's, um, More difficult than the eye tracking. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the thing is, and, and the thing is, when you when you start diving into some, something like this, you have some you have to put in assumptions when things get ready for the market. And right now, our assumptions are um, delayed. <laughs> Which makes it really difficult. Um, so the question, that's why I said start diving into it, but don't bet your life onto it right now. And um, what we're doing most of is projects with, with industry partners that are either producers for eye tracking technology or companies like Intel, for example, that want to do cool showcases around it. Um, <coughs> and you got quite some money from uh, Kickstarter right now. Oh, <laughs> you're aware of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a very interesting experience to launch a Kickstarter from Germany. I think it's even the largest Kickstarter that was launched out, launched out of Germany. So yeah, uh, looking forward to my cameras up there. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, perfect. Do you need special hardware for eye tracking? No, eye tracking is special. I don't have one here. I have it over there. You can see. Look at. Take a look at. It. Uh, right now, it's an external bar. The device he was talking about is actually an add-on to the Kinect. Okay. And 
with the um, with the uh, eye tracking that usually works, you have active infrared lighting. And if you if you take a look at any person around you and just look into the eye, you always see like reflections from the light up there right now. And what we what you do in eye tracking is you take away all the normal light that is in the room, create artificial infrared illumination, so you're sure where where the reflection comes from. And now with the reflections that are on your eyes and some assumptions on how the eye is built, you can actually track how to where somebody is. So does it make problems if two people in the same room use it in eyesight? Um, two different cameras. There, no. It, if they, they, we are still trying to figure out ways how to work with two monitors because then you're getting problems and you have to figure out what is what. Um, two two devices in one room is usually not a problem. One device in a fair hall is a problem because they have these strong lightings on the top and they have a lot of infrared in there. It usually makes makes problems for demonstration in, in public areas. Like in the fair, like a seabird or something, yeah. you have to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> but what about one device with multiple eyes tracking? Sorry? Like, can you do like one device and then like multiple people? Like, like yes, you can do that. So, we how do you know which comment to execute? Them? Well, right now, you can do it. We don't do it. We just focus on the first person that is closest to the computer. Um, because of what you're saying, well, first of all, I mean, we could separate who is who, but we wouldn't know what to do with information. <laughs> I mean, maybe looking a little bit further into the future, there are ideas and games where you can play, have many people playing on like a large beamer screen or something like that. But so you've got 